today's episode, we are spicing things up a little bit. Yes, we are, for the first time again in one here, talking to probably one of the hottest companies in the city and also in Canada, actually. Yes, about a year ago, we were right here in the hot seat with the one, the only, Mr. Eli Fatty. So, Eli, thank you so much for joining us today, the CEO of MindBridge. Now, for those of you that do not know MindBridge, it's been quite the stellar year for you. I know it has been a seed round. You have been collaborating with the Bank of England. And of course, as we said, you know, numerous other amazing things and even awards that you've received as well. So let's jump into these things a little bit straight from the start. It's been a spectacular year for MindBridge. And maybe you can share with us a little bit why your company and the space that you're in, specifically in artificial int intelligence, has been evolving and moved at such a fast pace over the last year. Thank you. Glad to be here. Uh, the reason that uh, we have been recognized by so many awards, and it's uh, the last one was the one with Deloitte, is because of the fact that we actually are solving real problems. The AI in general is very hot right now. If you look in Canada, we have 500 startups that are in AI. There is a lot of investments that are taking place in AI. We are one of the companies that actually have real problem that we are solving, and we have an application that the user really needs. And as a result, putting the two things together, there is a lot of interest in what we do. And the results are that in less than two years, we are going to be 40 people. We have customers in five countries around the world, and uh, the traction is going really well. So you closed the seed round of 4.3 million, um, quite spectacular. Now, when you get a round like that, and your company has been, as you say, solving real world problems, um, what, have you, what, what have you done with that influx of cash? What are you trying to do? What is your next step? And what are you using that for as a growth strategy moving forward? As I mentioned last year when we talked, the, the first role of a CEO is to build the team. So over the last 24 months, uh, we built, first you have to build the breadth. So you need to bring people that are going to be in key positions, including CTO and VP of growth. The, this year, because of the influx of money, we were all also able to build the depth. So I'm very pleased to know that my team now has not only first layer of strong people, but I have a second layer of strong people. And this is really very important because the next level is the scale up. And to do a scale up, uh, you cannot do it without having strong management team in both layers, multiple layers, because success can kill you. Uh, it's, it's kind of an oxymoron that to say success can kill you, but it is. When you have a lot of success and you don't have the infrastructure to support the success, you're going to get customer unhappy, and, and that leads to product not being ready and shortcuts and so on. So having a depth in the management team is really vital to a success of a scale-up. I mean, once again, uh, you know, I should just mention, uh, by the way, Canada, you've been recognized as one of the companies to truly watch. And you know, you've mentioned a few things now, but what would you say is a, a key driver behind this success of yours? You know, not, not just the industry that you've done, but also the team that you've put together. Uh, anything else? We have developed a product that is really interesting. You mentioned Bank of England. If you look at our product, one thing that I've not seen, and this is my seventh company, and the VCs mention Newbridge, uh, Mindbridge and say, Mindbridge happened once in 20 years in Canada. Why do they say that? Because we're in the intersection of three really core elements. We are the intersection of great management team. We're in the intersection of product that is disruptive. And the one very interesting point is that that same product is able to address multiple markets. And this is very unusual. Generally, when you have a product, you can address one market. So if you take our product right now, it, uh, we started by addressing the external audit world. But the same identical product, 
without changing one line of code can be addressed into the internal audit market. So where you look at one market that is, we estimate $5 billion in terms of our addressable market only on the audit alone, if you add now the internal audit, it's another 20 billion. But the same product, you mentioned the Bank of England, the same product is being customized, fine-tuned to do Bank of England, uh, which is a major, for us, it's a major success to be recognized a year ago when we were basically just started with the product. We were able to attract the attention of the Bank of England, and now we're doing multiple projects with them. And this is very exciting for a company like our size. You know, um, I mean, LAU, this is not your, <laughs> your first time uh, around the block, so to speak, as, as a CEO and as, and, and as someone that's running with such a successful company. For yourself, um, what, what advice would you give to fellow CEOs that's stepping into a company and has gotten so much growth in such a short period of time? So I it's uh, really important when you look at a company that to have product market fit. You hear that a lot, the VCs, product market fit. You, you have to make sure that the market wants your product. One of the biggest mistakes that CEO make is that they go into the market without really testing the market and understanding that the market needs that particular product. And then as a result, the adoption become very slow and sluggish. And that's where things go sideways. What you have to make sure as a CEO that focus, you will hear the same word over and over again. When I talk to my team, you can hear we have three markets. We can easily go to 10 markets. But my message to all of them, focus, focus, focus. We cannot be everybody, everything to everybody. We have to focus on what we do. And that's the key element that the CEO has to do because you get a lot of pressure from the market as well as from your team, well, there is an opportunity here, an opportunity there. And before you know it, you're now addressing 10 different things and not one of them very well. So we were very, very focused. The product that we sold and developed was strictly into the external world. We moved into the internal world because it's exactly the same product. We did not make any changes. For us to go to the Bank of England was an opportunity of a lifetime because of the stature. It was very important because if the Bank of England bought from you, everybody else looked differently at you. So that was one uh, element that we deviate from the focus, but it was valuable for our development of the rest of the product. So if you're watching this here, thank you very much for joining us here on Techopia Live. Um, we are here today with the CEO of MindBridge AI, a truly spectacular company that's done so much in such a short space of time. And once again, right here in our neck of the woods, we're so proud of that. Um, Ellie, I, I gotta ask you this, you have uh, watched Techopia Live, you have seen the companies grow, uh, you've seen so many companies you know, jump to the forefront within this year, and also just Ottawa in general as a, a tech hub, really kind of making its, its mark on a global perspective. Um, how do you see us as a city and as a nation kind of growing from this point forward, and maybe what, what would you like to see as we move forward, and maybe better collaborations or partnerships, or wh whatever they may look like? So uh, about a month ago, I had an op-ed, uh, Victoria Lennox and I, put an op-ed in the, na uh, it was in the National Post. And uh, our vision was for Canada for the next 150 years. So, so let me say, uh, I've been in this city uh, in the high tech for the last 35 years, and I've seen growth and I've seen uh, some uh, winters and some summers and, fall and uh, springs. And we, right now, we are on, I believe, in the spring again. Uh, so my concern, let, let me start by talking about Canada in a high level. We have a golden opportunity, and that's what I put in the op-ed with Victoria. We have an opportunity to be a leader in AI. Why do I say that? There are 500 companies in AI startup in Canada. The third highest in around uh, from the developing country uh, the developed countries we have three centers of excellence that the governments both ontario quebec and the federal government invested 
one in Toronto Vector Institute, one in Montreal, the Mila, and one in uh, Edmonton, the Emily. We, we have people like Jeff Hinton and Joshua Bengio, who are the father of deep learning. And they are generating a lot of interest and a lot of graduates. And the final element related to that is that the big five organizations that among them have $2 trillion to do whatever they want to with. If it's uh, Apple, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, and Amazon, they are opening big AI centers in Canada. That tells us that Canada is poised to become a big player in, in this field. Now, the, even from an investment perspective, we are getting quite a lot of investment in Canada in this field. However, this is an issue that for us in Canada is a problem in the sense that if you look at our average VC fund versus the average VC fund in the US, it's 10 to 1. And as a result, they are able to put more money into uh, the companies. But as long as we stay in the AI in niche areas, I think that we can do really well. So this is in Canada. Now, Ottawa, let's talk about Ottawa. From my perspective, it's slightly disappointing that KW, Toronto, Edmonton, Montreal were recognized uh, in this area. Ottawa really did not get a lot of any funding. So uh, I think that from that, in the AI field, we got a lot of other funding, but in the AI, I think that we have not seen the same investment that were made by the gov le different level of governments into the other cities. What, are we d what I would like to see, and I see now a spring in here in the sense that we've seen the su spectacular success of Shopify, and that's driving a lot more small company to start, more entrepreneur to start companies, but that's not enough. Starting companies is good, but we also need a lot more money. Uh, on the AI side, I think it's an area that we want to put Ottawa on the map. So as MindBridge, next year in May, we're going to have a big AI conference, and our intention is to actually put Ottawa on the map and start to put Ottawa, we plant the flag here that we are open to business and AI, we have great companies, and we can become center of excellence in this area. Well, that sounds like some exciting things to come. Uh, thank you so much for your dedication to this field. Thank you so much for bringing so much uh, as a CEO to MindBridge and of course, once again, to the entrepreneurial and startup realm period. It's such a pleasure and sitting down with you, as I said, about a year ago, you and I sat down doing our first episode here on Techopia Live. So we wanted to get you back here before we get to the end of the year, but congratulations on all the success that you've had. For those of you that's just watched this, make sure that you go on to techopia.ca to come find out a little bit more about the articles surrounding MindBridge, and of course, go check out MindBridge AI as well online and see all the amazing things that they're up to. Thank you so much, Ellie, for your time, and congratulations. Thank you.